What is good y'all? John D. Saunders here. You know the vibes. I'm excited to jump in this video because I'm talking about web design fundamentals of 2022. Now, as you know, I've been in this space for about eight years, so I've seen a lot of trends come and go, but I want to talk about principles that are effective for website design, the things that you can do to make dope sites that convert and how to get it done on a daily basis. So let's jump into my computer. I'm going to dive in and show you in real time some of the effectiveness of the websites that we've created. Let's go. Things first, let's talk about Hicks law. Now Hicks law states that you need to make it very, very simple for people to make a choice. Think of it as the more complex the choices are, the more difficult it makes the end user's ability to make a decision. So with most websites, you want to keep your calls to action from one to two. Now on this homepage, I'm on the Discord homepage here, as you can see, they don't have a ton of calls to action here. And this is a very simple homepage. Now in this main header area, you have two options. You can download it from Mac or you can open Discord in your browser. It's opening this based on the device type I'm using. Since I'm using Chrome browser on a Mac, it says download for Mac. I can click this and I can download it. Now there's also an option here to open Discord. So what I would do here is I would actually get rid of this one or this one and just keep it at two with contrasting look and feel for each button. That way the user can come here and they're not inundated with decision making. The goal is to remove clutter and showcase your end user just a couple options for them to make a decision. Hicks Law is crucial to any website design, and you will see this across the board on many, many website types. I just pulled up a few random websites. You can see this one here. The header has just a couple decisions, most likely to get started. That's the most prominent button here. If I go to Zico Studio, you can see we have the sign up and sign up here as well. If I go to this website, you have a clear call to action here. There's nothing here in this header, but it, this is mostly focusing on image content. So there's nothing there, but you can see these all have a common denominator. Now, what I like to do in most cases in that header, just have one call to action that I want most people prominently to see. If you have two, three, four different options, it's going to inundate that end user and they're going to have too many options to try to decide what they want to do next. A lot of times people get analysis paralysis and they'll just jump off with the quickness. Now I'm on Lapa Ninja because I want to show you the second element. It's called the law of common region. And basically what you want to do is place related content in specific areas so that people know that things grouped together are most likely <clears throat> identical or have affinity toward each other. So let me break it down. So I'm on this website here. Uh, what I like to do is go to Lapa Ninja just for inspo, just to show you all what the example is. So as you can see, all this content is grouped together in this section. Borders, backgrounds, everything is pretty much in tandem for these sections, right? So I know that all of these are grouped together and I should treat all of these as one entity on this page. So when you're building out your sites or when you're thinking of just an, a user experience standpoint, you want to make sure that all of these content, all this content is grouped together and then you have similar pixel spacing between each one. So a lot of times if you visit a blog or you're on a, a website with some type of resource area, usually the title, the author and the image are grouped together. And what that tells the end user is that I know that all these items are together so that therefore they're talking about something similar in regards to this section. So if I go here and I scroll down to here, you can see this is all ticket times. I can see latest news here and these are all grouped together. So anytime you do this, any content you create around this should be similar in regard to the end user and what they're seeing on their side. Now, one important element when it comes to website design, and most of you all know this, is you don't want to have large blocks of text. As you can see, this page has a good amount of content on it, right? But it's segmented in a way that makes it easily digestible. And this is similar to like an Apple website landing page. So as you can see, you have the main grouping here, right? You have this large title, you have the image. The first thing you see is this title. Then you see something medium, which is the, uh, first, sorry, the largest thing you see is this image. Second largest is the title, and then third is these calls to action, right? And you can see that there's a good amount of content here, but it's broken up into segments, one, two, three, that make it easily digestible. So instead of a long form paragraph, that's going to be really difficult for a user to peruse. They've added images here, titles, and then quick brief descriptions of each piece of content. And then of course, here you have cards, right? So you have an image, you have a title, and then you have a description. And then of course you have some type of call to action here as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of content on this page, but it's all segmented in a really easily digestible way that makes it easy for the end user. 
Next, let's talk about the serial position effect. Now, what this means is that users remember the first and last thing in a series. That's why the header of a website and the footer are so crucial to making that user experience an easy and memorable one. So as you can see in this header, it looks great. They have this arrow to scroll down and they also have a preview of the next section so I know I can scroll here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna learn about these hidden heroes, right, in regards to technology and I can click their profiles to learn more. But as you can see, as I get closer to the footer, I've got this really clear call to action to join the newsletter. That's a really big component on this website because they wanna be able to build that email list. And then the footer has just a little bit more information in regards to who I can contact and reach out to. So usually on a website in the footer, you'll have options that are in the main menu to access any additional pages that you might need, but try to keep your important content at the top. As you can see here, this is the main uh, idea of what this website is about. And then we have this clear, concise action area here for us to sign up for that newsletter. Now let's switch a little bit to, uh, to usability. So you want to keep your users informed and up to date with appropriate feedback. Now feedback come, can come in the form of, of many different ways. On this website we built for a client, as you can see when you highlight your mouse over this, right, this bubble starts to have an effect. I always say to add some type of highlight effect to a button because then it shows, shows the user that this item is interactive, right? That they can use it and that there's appropriate action once they click that link. Feedback can be color changes, effects, arrows, points, arrows, items, moving, interactions. Those are all considered effects. Even as we scroll, the content starts to scroll up and populate as I scroll through this website. Also, you want to make your website original like uh, Pablo's website here for his uh, design astrologist project. But you do want to keep conventional things, right? So every website should have a header, a footer, should have a logo in the top left or top area so you can signify what this brand is. Usually folks read left to right. So having that important content on the left with image content to accompany that works really great. And then having clear calls to action in the upper right hand corner. So most websites will follow this criteria. It doesn't say that you can't be creative, but you do want to stick to standards that most people will understand, especially when it comes to accessibility and being able to reach a larger audience. And lastly, let's talk about white space. Now, as you can see, I'm on the iPhone 13 web page. This page gets millions of views per month. And it's literally just a long form sales page. But as you can see, they do a great use of white space and essentially use all the elements that I talked about in this quick video. So as you can see, there's a nice amount of white space on the on each side, some consistency in regards to the title and description as well as this call to action here. As you can see, there's a there's a highlight option here. It's just really subtle, but it's Apple, so they can get away with it. But as you can see here, that there's a lot of white space in regards to the content, right? You have text in this lower left corner, so you can see this woman's beautiful face and this large image. All this con all this is really really strategic in regards to how this content is showcased, and they're using the card format to really organize this content and make it look really great on a desktop device. As you can see, all the content's broken up and grouped here, so you know that this is all identical. So these are all ideal principles that you can use in reading and creating your website designs and development. So again, a lot of these are common knowledge, but it's great to put this behind some elements so you can see it in the real time. And I really hope this was helpful. Thank you all for checking out the video content. It is much appreciated. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, Make sure you give me that feedback that I need to make these informed decisions, y'all. And I will see you next week. Peace.